Previously on Overworked Logic, we talked about connecting a single control cross point to one equipment cross point at a time. And that's cool, it's easier to use than buffers in most cases, and it makes your code look really slick. But in this video, we're going to connect one controller to multiple equipment cross points. But how do we do this? In the first video, we specified an equipment and a controller ID, and then we connected those two together. But then when we wanted to connect to another equipment cross point, we broke the previous connection and then made the new one. So to connect multiple equipment cross points at the same time, you just change the equipment ID, then pulse the connect input, and then you do this over and over until you've gotten all the connections that you want. So without further ado, let's jump into simple windows and build our demo program. So just like in our other videos, we have pre-made the X panel beforehand. We're going to be using the buttons inside of the controller box to control each of the zones hosted by the equipment cross points. So we're going to have three digital buttons as well as an up and down with an analog slider on our panel. And we're also going to have controls for connection and disconnection to all of the equipment cross points. So on our X panel, we're going to have three button presses named appropriately. And then under those, we're gonna have our up and downs. That analog gauge on the X panel was a slider, so we're gonna have some analog output from the panel controlling that. And that's basically all the output we need coming from the X panel. So now we need to add our controller into the mix because the controller is going to propagate these signals to the equipment cross points. So in our controller cross point, we are going to pass all of the digital signals from the X panel as well as the analog output. And again, what's neat about using equipment cross points is that we don't have to know beforehand what's going to happen to all of these to know that we're going to get feedback from this control cross point. So what I can do is just copy all of these signals over to the inputs, give them a conspicuous suffix, and then drag those back to the X panel. And we'll do the same thing for the analog value as well. So we haven't told the program what's going to be happening to these buttons, but we know for a fact that we're going to be getting feedback from the control cross point. And before we can go on, we have to give the control cross point an ID. So we're going to give it an ID of 1. Before we add the connection logic, let's go ahead and deal with how each of these zones are going to respond to these inputs. So I'm going to add a new subfolder under the logic folder. I'm going to call it equip1. And inside of there, I'm going to add my equipment cross point. I'm going to add an interlock, and I'm also going to add a ramp. All right, so we can get rid of the X panel for now. And just like before, we have to know what joins we're going to be using on the equipment cross point to make sure that we're actually capturing the signals that are being passed from the controller. And we just have to keep in mind that the equipment cross point has to use the same join numbers as the controller. The signals going into the controller are going to be passed to the output of the equipment cross point. And what we're going to do is use these same signal names, but we're going to prefix them with EQ1. So now that we're capturing these, we can actually do stuff with them. We're going to take the three button presses and we're going to pass them to an interlock. And out of the interlock, I'm going to give them that feedback suffix and then just drag them back to the equipment cross point. The up and downs are just going to drive the up and down inputs of the analog ramp with a ramp time of three seconds. And since we're not doing any actions to the up and down buttons, we'll just drag those back to the outputs of the equipment cross point. And now the output of the analog ramp is going to be fed back to the analog output of the equipment cross point. And remember that on the controller, we are capturing the input from the slider on the X panel and passing that to our equipment which means that potentially this analog output could change the value of our slider. So we'll just copy and move that over to the analog input of the equipment cross point. And the very last thing that we need to do before we move on is give the equipment cross point an ID. So let's take a look at what we have now. So we are capturing five digital outputs from our X panel, as well as analog output from a slider. We are passing that to the inputs of a control cross point. And from there, that is being passed to the outputs of an equipment cross point. 
The equipment crosspoint is doing a little bit of logic on those symbols, the analogs and the digitals, and then passing those back to the control cross point. And those outputs come through here. And from there, we just take these outputs and then feed them back to the X panel. And most cross point applications, you'll usually have the same logic in a lot of different zones. So instead of writing that same logic over and over, let's use the special copy paste methods in simple windows. So I'm just gonna click the folder containing the logic we wanna duplicate. It control C, click the logic folder at the top, and press Control shift v And here we can specify which parts of everything we want to change. What this is going to do is any numbers that the pace special senses in the signals, it'll increment them. So it's kind of like hitting F4, but for a whole group of symbols. And we're just going to leave this at two copies of the equipment logic. We're going to hit OK, and let's see what happens. Let's close all this stuff. If we look at the equipment cross point number two, we see that all of the EQs are now followed by a 2, whereas on the first one they're followed by a 1. And if we look at the first equipment cross point's ID, that's still 1. And the second equipment cross point has an ID of 2. So we saved ourselves a bunch of time by doing this, which is awesome. So we've got our three identical equipment cross points, we've got a controller, we've got our X panel going. The last thing that we need to do is worry about how to connect all of these things together. So let's close all that we've got at the top. And I'm going to add a new folder and call it connection. And inside of the connection folder, I'm going to add the cross point connector, a couple analog initializes and an analog one shot. The first analog initialize is going to contain the controller ID. And since we're only using one controller, we're going to initialize it with the value one and that'll be our controller ID. The second analog initialize will contain the IDs of the equipment cross points. And from our X panel, we know that we're going to be specifying these IDs using buttons 42, 43, and 44 on the X panel. So I'll just add two more inputs. and we've got all of our equipment IDs. Let's go back to our X panel, and then we'll go down to the 40 second input so that we can put these connect symbols on the presses they're supposed to be connected to. All right, that's looking good. Now the last thing that we need to do is trigger the connect input of the cross point connector. And so similar to the first tutorial, we're going to use the changing values of the equipment ID to send a pulse to the connector telling the controller to connect to a new equipment ID. So with all of these pieces, let's fill everything in on the connector. Our equipment ID goes here, controller ID at the top, connect input goes here, and from the panel we know that the disconnect is going to go to ID 41. And the cross point connector isn't happy until we've filled in all of the signals. So right now we have a functioning program. We could compile this and upload it and it would work perfectly. But we're going to add a couple of extra things just for the sake of demonstration. So let's close out of everything except for the X panel. The first thing we're going to do is add feedback from the equipment cross points to let us know that they're actually connected. So we're going to go up to the in use outputs of these equipments give them all signal names. And then we'll take these over to our X panel. And that'll let us know when an equipment cross point is actually connected. The disconnect button is going to have a momentary feedback. And what we want to be able to do is observe the state of each of the signals going into the equipment cross points without actually being connected to them, just so we can see what's going on. So what we'll do is scroll up to the top of our X panel, and starting at join 11, we'll copy the feedbacks from equipment 1, put them in there, scroll down to input number 21 on the X panel, 
copy the feedbacks from equipment number two, put them on input 21, scroll down to input 31 on the X panel, and then finally take the feedbacks from equipment cross point number three and drag them on over there. Now in addition to the digitals, we also had the analogs that we were modifying. So if I go back over to the analog side of the X panel and analog input number 11, we'll take the feedback from the slider from equipment one, put that on 11, go to number 21, analog feedback from slider number two goes there, and on 31, we'll take the analog feedback from equipment cross point number three. Okay, so that should do it. Let's compile and make sure that everything works correctly. The first thing you'll notice is that when we're not connected to anything, the buttons don't have any effect. So let's connect to equipment cross point number one and start playing with the buttons. When we push button number two, we see that button two on equipment number one goes high. And when we move any of these, we see that the analog behaves exactly like we think it should. And when we start playing with the up and down buttons on the slider, we get analog values propagating through and we see that the feedback going into equipment cross point number one is exactly replicated from the output of the cross point controller. And I can even click and drag this and we can see that the instantaneous feedback is there. But now what happens if we connect to more than two equipments at the same time? Connecting to equipment cross point number two, we see that the analog value is propagated over just because that's the property of analog inputs, they're, pers they're persistent. But we lose the feedback that we had on equipment number one. But if I activate input number one on the controller, we see that the corresponding output goes high on equipment one and two's feedbacks. So I can mess with these buttons and we see that the state tracks exactly like it should. And the same thing that we'd expect happens with the slider for the down and the up and the manual dragging. And if I wanted, I could connect to all three of these at the same time, play with the buttons as I want, play with the slider, the downs and the ups, and everything tracks just exactly the way we think it should. So this is all really cool and it's neat to play with, but keep in mind there are some nuances. Let's disconnect from everything and we're gonna set up a little bit of a strange situation. We're gonna set everything separate on these different equipment. So equipment one, we're gonna leave exactly how it is. Equipment two, we're gonna set button two high and we're gonna move the analog slider down to here. We're gonna disconnect. And then on equipment three, we'll set button three high and we'll move the slider up to here. So you'll notice that in each of our zones, we've got different states going on. What happens when I try to connect to each of them in sequence? When I connect to input number one, we see the state of button one go high, but the slider in that zone takes exactly on the state that we had previously. And then if I connect over to equipment number two, even though we haven't changed any of the digital signals, we see that the state shown on our controller is just the state reflected in equipment number two. And again, that analog value has transferred over. And then finally, when we connect to the third equipment, we see that we're connected to all of our equipment cross points and even so, we're only showing the state of the last equipment that we connected to. And so the thing to keep in mind when using cross points in general is when you have multiple zones, multiple equipments that could have different states, by default, the state that will be shown on your controller is the state of the last equipment cross point that you connected to. But since we're connected to all of these simultaneously, we can change these button inputs and everything will track exactly the way it did before. As always, the sample code for this project is linked down below in the comment section or from the pop-up shown here. We just want to say thank you guys for sticking with us, thank you for watching, it means a lot. I know we were on hiatus for a while, but we've been pretty busy. But since the break's here, we plan on getting at least a couple videos out, so we look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for today. If you really liked what you saw, give us a like down below. And if you really loved it, be sure to subscribe. But until next time, this has been Jonathan, and I'm out. I'll see you later.